I consider myself an environmental artist, um, which means that my practice has been really site specific. It's one thing to approach these global themes like climate change, um, but what is most compelling, I think, to an audience and to me is the specific site impact. So the best example or recent example I have for that is my work this past year at Washington College where um, you know, I went in really having um, this kind of Im implicit, integral um, background with it because I was raised in Maryland, I was raised in DC, and um, you know, having gone to the Eastern Shore and just, just that, you know, just my, my own personal experience and observations. And I had done a little research, but it wasn't until I, I met with um, this team of scientists there and researchers that out of all of the different issues with the environment, there was one that kind of rose to the top. So um, Washington College is based on the Chester River and a lot of their tourism, a lot of their daily life is surrounds that river. Mm -hmm. And because of climate change, the impact there has been seen or is like so evident with the massive growth of this invasive species. It looks like bamboo. It's they're called Phragmites. They they reach to they can grow like ten feet a year. They like reach to the sky higher than we are, and um, and so it became you know really obvious to me you know that this invasive species is literally closing, encroaching on their waterways. And so when you talk about or I claim to be an environmental artist and I want to you know invoke this ecological consciousness or this kind of awareness within a gallery or within a museum setting. You know, I'm, I, I don't believe I can do that broadly. I need to do it in, in a site-specific way. And so um, I spent the year, again, using that example, sourcing myself, going out to kind of this border, this little um, peninsula along the Chester River, um, sourcing the Phragmites, and I sourced hundreds and hundreds of them. And I learned so much um, about the land, about tides, about water, about the habitat, about this one specific material. And I integrated that and obviously integrated the conversations with the locals and with, with researchers. I integrated that into a massive installation immersive installation there because in my mind it made sense and it was material focused mm -hmm. and so what we have here is is um, in my mind it runs um, it, it follows a very same model so my practice is material focused and in this case with the two pieces at the Krieger Museum it is completely focused on these mine cores, which were extracted from, from a mine in Maine around Passamaquoddy land. It's been, I mean, you can see I'm so excited about um, the activation that's happened, especially with the outdoor piece, but also with this piece as well. Um, so because my practice is material-centered and I've been working with the mine cores, um, you know, both pieces are, are about, you know, these themes of claim, of permanence, of, um, of labor. And so um, my hand is, is involved with both, but in very different ways. And so this piece, Void one is is about that void. It's about the cavity that was created when I took, you know, there there are over 300 mines here in Maryland around us between DC and, and you know the border of Maryland. And so when I gathered 324 mine cores and hand traced them, 
and then remove them, you're left with this kind of remnant, right? You're left with this, this cavity. And so, um, you know, the piece outside is almost complementary to that because my hand is literally in that, like, um, you know, the heart of my, my practice, which is humanity's interruption of nature. And so here, man has taken over, you know, 150 years ago, these machines and extracted rock in these pretty forms, right? Rock's not, rock doesn't come out in cylinders. <laughs> you know, when you dig in the ground, it doesn't come out in three-foot cylinders. And, um, and taken my hand and placed it in a way that um, um, literally connects and interacts with the land here, um, but also the elements. And so that's what's been incredible to me to witness. So one of the things that I learned really early on by, um, and one of the gifts of you know, extending my practice and expanding it to have these conversations with earth scientists and with geologists um, is something called oxidation. And when you take these cores, which have been boxed up and housed, um, you know, again for a century, and expose them to air, expose them to rain, um, you know, it's here through December, through the snow. Um, it almost is kind of like when you slice an apple, how the, the hues, the colors change, the surface changes, um, and that's what's happened here. And so if you look back, if I look back to how I documented the piece, you know, when I first installed it in June, you'll see a lot of, um, you know, gray tones. And you'll see some, uh, it's like, uh, almost like this abstract white spiral that's quartz going through it. And what's happened, um, you know, I've come back probably about once a month, once every few weeks, is that through time, through that exchange of the elements, it has magnified, pulled out, revealed the other minerals in the core. And so you'll see, you might see some gold, you might see some silver, you see a little less lead, and you see more of the quartz. And so all of a sudden we have this rainbow of, of hues that, um, that we may not have seen initially. I'm super excited about, you know, this summer, the past eight weeks, I focused on creating works on paper using the cores. So I, I've spent a lot of the summer, when I haven't been going up and back to, to the mine in Maine, I um, have been in a materials lab. So it's kind of like a, um, it's been a big um, chemistry lab for me. And so what I've, I've been doing and what I'm really excited about is this, juxtaposition of I've made pigment from the actual mine cores and their natural hue but then I've mixed it with the same chemicals that the mining company uses to extract the cores and so it's almost like um, it's like bleach I mean the bleach is a chemical right it's taking a lot of peroxides a lot of acids and um, you know which of course impact the water supply and and you know seeing that impact um, I've used not just any water but water DC tap water which has its own minerals and its own you know chemical setup and seeing how that that interacts so I'm really excited about um, a, about kind of that body of work um, that said the heart of who I am and the heart of my practice is my own appreciation of nature and my need to be outdoors. And so, um, you know, because of that, it is critical to me to, to get that time. Um, I'm looking, you know, for, for the opportunity to take that experience and bring it within a gallery to kind of um, harness that sanctity, you know, to show to show what I found through this material appreciation and kind of share that and create dialogue. Mm -hmm. And the piece outdoors has this, and it's part of why, again, I'm still so excited about it, 
right? It's not only like the interaction with um, the elements and the rain and the water and like people's negotiation with it, but the way it's placed, it has such an amazing conversation in my mind to the other artworks. And so you have Richard Deutsch's mammoth, you know, granite piece, which has been shaped and fabricated, and um, it's almost a, in contrast to to this raw work, right? Um, in so many ways, and you know, same same for um, Dahlia Lubick's work too. It's um, how much and how can you interact with the materials. I'm super excited to, to have um, the mine artworks get into museums and get into gallery spaces. Again, because I think this is a critical dialogue. I want that discourse. Um, using the mine cores as, um, as my material, you know, brings in this environmental or science perspective historical perspective and a cultural perspective. And so um, while I'm having fun dabbling between all three of those, what's next for me is number one, um, you know, creating these collaborations with museums and with, with um, gallery spaces for the next two to three years. I'm also working with um, the Passamaquoddy tribe and with the owners of the the mine cores to consider repatriation of them. And so that's taken my art practice into more of an environmental activism approach, much more so than ever before. Um, locally, I have an enormous project that's starting. I'm doing a collaboration with the National Park Service and with the Glen Echo Gallery. And next spring, about a year from now, um, I'll be having a large-scale outdoor work built there.